about time. Ginger Runner. What is up, everybody? Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner, here for another Ginger Runner review. Big review today. I've actually been working on this one for a matter of months. We are reviewing the Cento 9. Brand new watch from Cento. This thing is a beast. But before we even get into the review, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This is our wonderful adventure dog, Gus. He's been through a lot over the last few months. Uh, multiple surgeries to treat and remove his cancer. He's doing much better now. But if you follow us on other social media platforms, you'll know his whole story. We uh, just created a bunch of cool new head wraps right here, which are available today to everyone. The profits of which go to help cover the costs of some of these surgeries. He's been such a good sport. He's doing incredibly well now. So if you want to grab some cool gear, and support this little guy, uh, all you have to do is go to gingerrunnerstore.com. You can get those right now, at least until supplies last, because they're limited edition, and once they're done, they're done. That's it. All right, buddy. Back to the review. Okay, time for the Cento 9. Now, I've been waiting to do this review for a long time. Tons of you with your eagle eye vision have noticed I've been wearing this watch in reviews and other videos and been like, hey man, when are you gonna do the Cento 9 review? Because that's how you sound. Today's the day, my friends. <clears throat> Firstly, this watch has a lot of features I will not be getting into in this review. There are plenty of reviews out there that get into all the specifics, all the nuances that the watch has, multi-sport, swimming, all that stuff. DC Rainmaker is a perfect example. In this review, my experience with it has been limited to running, trail running, ultra running, adventures out in the mountains. So I'll be speaking primarily on those experiences and stripping away all the marketing mumbo jumbo and just talking about the things that I like and dislike about the watch. Let's be honest, I'm gonna use it as you would use it. And I have been, day in, day out. I've been using it as my primary sport tracker, only supplementing for uh, comparison purposes with the Ambit 3 Peak, the Spartan Sport and the Spartan Ultra. I hope to do a comparison video between the Cento 9 and the new Phoenix series. This will not be that, this is gonna focus primarily on the Cento 9. So let's get into it. The Cento 9 is actually quite similar to the Cento Spartan Ultra, which I've just recently mentioned. So if you found this review, you're probably already really familiar with the Cento 9, a lot of those extra features. Again, I just wanna talk about things I like and dislike. So let's get into those right now. Starting as always with things that I like about the Cento 9 battery. This is something that this watch does quite well. I'm starting with this like because I think it's one of the best implementations of long lasting battery life in a watch that I've seen yet. The watch in its best settings, most accurate GPS signal can record up to 25 ish hours. And if you really throttle back the features, it can be extended up to 120, 130 hours. Those stats are impressive. That's over five days of continuous tracking. It's great for those multi day stage races or, or tour de Jean long adventures. Pretty cool. Now the stats are impressive, but that's not what makes me super happy. It's the implementation of the battery settings. Before every workout, you have the option of changing the battery mode quickly and efficiently just right here on the watch on the screen. So if you know that your workout's gonna take an extra long time, even before you start it, you can click those settings, change the battery life, set it and forget it. You don't have to worry about the app. You don't have to worry about connecting it to a computer. But let's say you forget to charge your watch. You're already in the middle of a workout and all of a sudden the watch gets down to about 10% battery power. It is going to actually ask you, would you like to change the battery settings to extend the life of the watch? It's such a simple concept. Hey, do you want to change the battery life while the battery's running out? But the fact that this is the first time I've really encountered that is wonderful. Even deeper, if you end up using the entire battery on the watch, it will continue to track in a timer sort of mode. All the features shut off, it just shows you the time of day, but it continues to track the timer of your activity in the background. For someone that hates having to charge my watch all the time, I'm looking at you, Apple iWatch. A lot of you people out there love those watches. I tend to not want to deal with a charge, just hate feeling that my watch needs to be tethered to something at all times when I'm not using it. Sometimes I forget. Sometimes I'm lazy. Oh yeah, extra added bonus. It will learn when you do your longer workout. So if you tend to do a Saturday or Sunday long run, Thursday or Friday, it'll remind you, have you charged your watch? Again, simple tech executed well can all be done in watch, which from Cento is a big deal. Customizing, this is the first Cento that I've really got a chance to use where I can make the screens look like how I want them to look, or at least display the amount of data that I want them to display. Seven items of data. I can do altitude, elevation change, duration of activity, distance of activity, heart rate. You can do all of it. You can display up to seven pieces of info on one screen. You can switch between multiple screens. You can customize your own workout screens. That's helpful. And it's nice to be able to have that in the Cento 9. Previous watches wouldn't let you. Features. This is the first watch from Cento that I felt actually checked off all of the 
the features. Heart rate, wrist mounted heart rate monitor, GPS accuracy, battery life, and this watch is the barometer version. It has a barometer, great for altitude, elevation gain. It takes all of that and puts it into one package. Normally, from Sunto, you'd be able to pick one or two of those items and you'd have to suffer on the other end. That led to a lot of questions from you, consumers, and myself included, uh, which watch is best for me? Do I want something that tracks just vertical gain? One that does the wrist heart rate monitor? You'd have to pick and choose which watch based off of what specific item you'd want to track. Finally, a watch that kind of does it all. It's awesome. And finally, it's quick. So I noticed in previous Sunto watches I've used that the screens, you'd be switching between them and it wouldn't move very quickly. The UI just wasn't a quick or reactive user interface. It's just really buggy. This one's improved and not only on the screen and the watch itself, but just connecting to Moves Count or the Sunto app on your phone. It's quick, it's efficient. The uploads move much faster than they have in the past. It's improved. So I gotta call it out as a like. Now that is all well and good. Those are things that I like about this new Sunto 9. There are things I dislike. First of all, trust. The relationship between a runner and a watch is an intimate and unique relationship. You spend hundreds of dollars on a little device that straps to your wrist in hopes that it collects accurate and informative data. You want all that data to be valuable. The only way for it to be valuable is if it is accurate. If I run six miles, I hope that the watch would confirm that I ran six miles and not short or inflate the results. Same with heart rate stats, elevation gain, altitude. My relationship with the 9 has actually been rocky from the start. It's smoothed out a little bit, but to be honest, it's not built on a foundation of trust. Most of my midweek runs are either out and back or set distances. Often on the out and back, the watch will overread on outbound and underread on inbound. The results are fine in the end, but while you're in the middle, of a workout, it's aggravating. The first big event that I used the Cento 9 to track was my 100K 100K. It was a live event. You can go back and watch all 14 hours of the live stream. The Cento 9 worked great up until about the last eight miles or so when it just decided to stop updating. I would have to wait 10 or 15 minutes before it would actually click over, which would result in additional miles. I was constantly looking at my wrist, just trying to figure out when am I going to click over to 62 miles. Ended up going over in the long run. I don't know what happened. Sunto doesn't know what happened. It was just one of my first experiences with the watch that made me go, oh boy, is this going to be a problem here on out? Other little things, of course, wrist heart rate tracking just isn't always accurate. And in this case, I'd say the first five or 10 minutes of a workout, the heart rate is all over the place. On yesterday's workout, the heart rate was jumping in anywhere between 110 to 210, which is astronomical for a workout that started with me walking. <laughs> the elevation gain for sure seems to be the most accurate data point that I'm pulling off of the watch on a regular basis. I will say that it rarely equals out when I start and finish in the same location. You would hope that the elevation gain and loss would be the same number. A lot of these things people won't necessarily care about or even have to worry about. I will say that there were weeks where I found myself popping back on the Ambit 3 Peak only because this was and has been one of my most trustworthy watches since I got it. Also, as these issues popped up, I would contact Cento and they just sort of stopped contacting me back after a while. <laughs> that kind of sucks. Moving on, fused track. This is a new feature for the Cento 9. I get it, I think it's a neat feature, but it's only implemented in its slower GPS pinging modes, which is endurance, where the GPS pings every one minute, or ultra, which is the GPS pings every two minutes. So basically, Fuse Track takes those data points and uses additional data somehow to connect these dots with smoother lines. So rather than just saying you went from point A to point B in a straight line, you went from point A to point B and somehow fills in the gaps. I'm curious how they fill in those gaps. I wish that it was a technology that was implemented in the other GPS tracking modes and not just those long duration tracking modes because the tech seems cool, seems logical if the maths are right. But the fact that it isn't implemented in those one to 10 second GPS ping modes kind of sucks because what you end up getting especially in the 10 second mode, are 10 second straight lines. Fill in the gaps, night use. So this actually became one of the most aggravating parts of the Cento 9 was just activating the backlight when running at night is kind of tedious. When set in a normal battery mode, the backlight on the watch turns off when not in use. Makes perfect sense. To reactivate the backlight, you can press any of the three buttons. Unfortunately, if you press one of those three buttons, it either pauses the workout, moves to another screen, or activates an interval. You can bypass that by holding down the middle button, going to the menus, going through a couple menus to get to backlight and turning it on permanently while you're running. Then you got a glowing orb on your wrist, which then reduces some of that battery life. I would love for there to be a dedicated light button, such as there is on the old Ambit 3 Peak. I want to be able to look 
look down at my wrist, either press a button or just see what's going on without having to worry about wasting battery life or keeping the watch light on on my wrist the entire time. There's a bunch of different modes and different settings that you can do to double tap, activate the backlight. That hasn't worked on my watch at all, no matter what settings I put into it. So running at night or even in that transitional period where you need to see your watch screen is pain in the ass. Lack of features. This is going to be a big thing for a lot of you. Now, the Cento 9 has pretty much every feature that Cento has offered in other watches all combined into one watch, which is great. Navigation, breadcrumbs, GPS tracking, elevation, barometer, all that stuff, depending on which Cento 9 you get. But looking at its main competitor, the Garmin Phoenix 5 and uh, the 5 Series, if you're navigating or using uh, some of the features in the navigation mode on the Garmin, you're able to see maps. On the Cento 9, you don't get a lot of those features. It's simplistic. Yes, it works, but there's some things that I wish were able to be implemented. This last weekend, I was using the navigation feature to track a certain section of pacing the TNOA Country 100. Worked great. There was an intersection with two different trails, and you couldn't actually determine which direction you needed to go. It would have been nice to be able to see the actual map with trail directions on the watch, which other watches allow you to do. Also, I wish it was marked a little bit better on the course. We managed to make it work, it just took a little bit extra time and patience. So it has plenty of features, but there's a lack of some pro features that would be really, really nice. And finally, uh, the Moves Count and Cento app. There's a new app that Cento is putting out into the store. I believe they're trying to make it into some sort of new social tracking app. It's already difficult as it is to interact through Moves Count, especially when Moves Count is down quite often and then connect over to Strava. We'll see if this new app connects to Strava eventually. It's not necessarily in the plans or in their announcement, but having to work between two different apps to get your data uploaded to be able to track it and look at it, it's a bit annoying. And the fact that you cannot design a workout and put that onto this watch like you could in the former Ambit 3 series, I, like, I'm so bummed about that. You can activate intervals, but you can't design a workout. A long warm-up, smaller intervals, followed by a longer interval or warm-up or cool down. It just, it's a feature they've had in other watches. I wish that was in the Cento 9. Maybe in future updates to this watch, the developers, which is a small team at Cento, maybe they'll come out with some ways for uh, that to actually be implemented. I hope. We'll see. But those things aside, uh, the watch has been nice to use on my wrist. It's great to collect all the data all together. I've come to trust it more than I did initially, which is good. I no longer find myself reaching for the Ambit 3 Peak. Uh, this is my go-to watch at all times. I wear it all day, every day. It tracks the sleep if you want to do that. You know, there's all that stuff. There's lots of little things. Lots of little things that make me go, Ooh. So in conclusion, let's get into more specificity. Uh, the quality of the watch. I think this is where it absolutely nailed, knocked out of the park. Uh, I've never really had a problem with the quality of Cinto builds. I love this watch. I think the strap implementation where it's more of a universal design, you can swap them out with different colors, different styles if you want, it's great. The glass is awesome. Like there's no scratches or whatever on this thing. I've had it for months. I can see this lasting quite a long time, especially with that battery life, it's great. Comfort, way more comfortable than the old watches. You'll notice right off the bat, just the design of the watch itself is far more streamlined, it's lighter, it's more comfortable. With the built-in heart rate monitor, you are gonna have to strap the watch down considerably tighter on your wrist. I found that to be the case on my wrist, really having to crank it down. If you're gonna get proper heart rate through the wrist, you're gonna have to do it. Fit, normally with shoes and other gear that I talk about, we talk about fit and if it's gonna fit you, your body, your foot, whatever, uh, it's not really applicable in this case. So instead of fit, let's talk about accuracy. The watch will begin to become more accurate the more you use it. I think the heart rate is pretty fluctuating, especially towards the beginning of a workout. The GPS tracking is accurate. You're gonna find times like, this is my six mile loop that I've run with the watch over and over and over again. But every single time it records a different distance. It's tedious at times, but not a blanket problem. I think the relationship is building. We're, we're trusting each other a little bit more, which is something to be said for a watch this expensive, which brings me to price $599 for this, the barometer version or $499 for the non barometer version uh, definitely helps with elevation gain altitude, that sort of thing. That is a lot of money. I totally get it. If you're going to invest in a tracking device like this, you're going to spend a lot of money in most cases, hundreds of dollars. This is certainly at that top end. It also puts it squarely in competition with the Garmin Phoenix 5 series, which again, I have not reviewed. I cannot attest to one way or the other. I hope to compare the two very, very soon. That is a lot of money. And normally we talk about looks, uh, but in this case, not really applicable. I think it's a sexy black watch that works with all outfits. <laughs> if that's something you care about. Ha. <sighs> So that brings us to our last point is the Cento 9, a buy, try, 
or a Y. In this case, if you are looking for a sport tracking watch that covers all your bases, whether it's trail running, adventuring out in the mountains, skiing, alpine, you know, does everything, which most of the watches at this price point will do, I'm gonna say it's a try because I have not yet tried the Phoenix 5. I do think this gets you everything that you would need, the heart rate, the tracking, the navigation, everything in a very durable, nice package. I've been using this uh, now primarily as my only watch. What it lacks in some features, I think it excels in its simplicity. So if you're juggling between the Phoenix 5 and another watch, you gotta throw the Sunto 9 in there. So that, my friends, is it for my review of the Sunto 9. Have you got a chance to wear it, use it, track with it? What are your results? I wanna know. In the comments of this video, let me know what your experiences have been with the Sunto 9 or other Sunto products, or are you using the Garmin Phoenix 5? Is that thing just crushing it? Are you running into problems? I know my experience with the Phoenix first version was garbage. And I know they've improved a lot upon it over the last couple of years. So hopefully uh, we got some competition here. And that, my friends, is it for the review. Again, if you want more information or you want to get a Sunto 9 for yourself, I've got links in the description. It'll take you over to Running Warehouse. It helps the channel. So consider it if it is something that you are looking to snag. I also have a link in the description to our wonderful brand new limited edition head wraps. Uh, consider these if you have not already. I hope you guys liked this review. If you did, make sure you like, favorite, and subscribe to this channel. Click the little notification bell to be updated any time that we upload a video here. Social media links will get you to those places. And at the bottom there, patreon.com slash the ginger owner for as little as a dollar a month. You support everything that we do here. You get some cool perks on the back end. Definitely consider it if you have not already. That, my friends, is it. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and party of the hardest. And also, if you've made it this far, don't get too caught up in all the numbers. Yes, I talk about GPS tracking watches, and I'm a big fan of technology and stuff like that. The end result is, really, you don't need to worry too much about all the numbers. So that's my message for today's video. Uh, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next week. Okay, bye-bye.